Ford is brought to you by Dub Herring Ford, Dub Herring Chrysler, and Papa's Camper City. Fans here at Dub Herring Ford, Lincoln Mercury, and Picky Henry, we always have a great selection of factory program cars. Look at this 1994 Lincoln Continental, low, low mileage, low, low price, 21,988. Friends, that's only Dub Herring Ford, Lincoln Mercury, and Picky Henry. You'll like our deals, you'll like the way we do business. Friends, I want you to meet Sam Meek. Sales of the month, Dove Harry Ford, Lincoln Market, picking in. I'd like to invite all my friends to come on over to Pawpaws. You like the way we do business. News 8 Sports presents the WVUE High School Scoreboard with Jim Gallagher and Lionel Bienvenu. Hello again, and welcome to the WVUE High School Scoreboard Show. I am Lionel Bienvenu. And I am Jim Gallagher. Tonight, it is round two of the playoffs. We're down to 16 teams in each classification. Some big matchups tonight, especially involving local teams from Class 5A, Lionel. Yes, Jim, St. Aug is one of them. They were almost eliminated by Bonneville last week, but the Purple Knights beat the Bruins on that wild final play we showed you earlier today. 
Tonight, second round found the Knights up against District 7 Save rival Jesuit. Doesn't get any better for that one. For the story on the game, let's go to Tad Gormley Stadium and our Joe Trahan. Joe? Tonight at Tad Gormley, it's a classic Catholic League matchup. The last two times St. Aug and Jesuit have played, they've split. St. Aug knocked Jesuit out of the playoffs last year, but Jesuit beat St. Aug in the regular season. So tonight, it's anybody's ball game. Let's check out some of the highlights. Pick it up in the third quarter, trailing 14 to three. Jesuit QB Paris Childress airs it out for a diving Jacob Broad. Great catch, but it was 14-9 on still leading. Blue Jays next possession, it's Childress again. He rolls right and races in from 11 yards out to put Jesuit on top, 17-14. But there's no quit in the night. On fourth and one from the 34, Dennis Burke breaks free, and St. Og regains the lead 21-17 on the great touchdown run. But the seesaw affair continues. This time, Childress hits Guy Bumpus for the seven-yard touchdown to put the Jays back up 24-21. And that's the way it ends, 24-21. Jesuit advances to the next round of the playoffs. For the high school scoreboard, I'm Joe Trahan. All right, Joe. There was another matchup of teams from District 7-5A tonight. The Shaw Eagles and Brother Martin Crusaders met at Hoss Memphis Stadium. The Eagles trying to beat Bromont for the third year in a row. The Shaw cheerleaders hoping their team would get the win, but this was all about defense. Brother Martin defense tonight. Quarterback Derek Joseph of Shaw chased down, chased around, and finally sacked for the big loss. Brother Martin quarterback Blair Barbier goes to the air on this play. This will end up 36 yards down the middle. Touchdown to Ricky Corrales. It was 7-0 Bromart. Shaw got a field goal in the game from Robert Wilson, 37-yarder, but they were shut down for the most part. The Eagles had only one first down in the second half. They fumbled with 105 left, and Brother Martin beat them tonight. The final score, Bromart 9 and Shaw 3. Well, Lionel Hanzo is the number one team in the state in Class 5A, and they are especially tough to beat at home in Tiger Stadium. A very tough task tonight for the Mandeville Skippers. They traveled to meet those Tigers. Go to the action early on in this game, and this young lady, not only the cheerleader, she also doubles playing in the band. Now we go to the action here. Leading 13-3, to Tigers already up. That's Mandeville's Brandon McCollum, sacked by Cortrell Davis. Big night for Davis. There he comes through with the blocked punch. It was Hanville's defense that won this game tonight. They take it. The final score, 13-3, not 13-0, but 13-3, Hanville over Mandeville. On the North Shore tonight, the Carver Rams, a very tough assignment. They had to travel to Salmon in Class 3A. Salmon's Dwayne Woods takes it over from the two-yard line, and at that point, it was 7-0, Salmon leading this game. One thing Salmon likes to do, pound it on the ground. Again, this time it's Keith Porter taking it over easily from the one. Spartans led at that point 14-0, and that's the way it ended. Salmon shuts out Carver 14-0 tonight. Of course, there's still a lot of action left to come, including the number one team in the state in Class 4A, the John Curtis Patriots. Also, Jim, we've got our Scholar Athlete of the Week. He's Robert Dixon from St. Augs. We'll do that in just a few minutes, but first, here's the playoff score from tonight's action. Stay tuned, and we'll be back. There, that's some real upsets. Let's get right to the, uh, the scores. All right, Coach. The scores and the highlights, and we've got a bunch of them. We start with St. Ogg, who got the miracle finish against Bonneville to move on against Jesuit. So district foes in the rematch. St. Ogg's Sean Rhodes was injured in the first quarter. Here we're going to come back. We're going to see Ogg leading 14 to 3. Jesuit quarterback Childress is going to throw a 30 yard touchdown pass. 14 9 St. Ogg at that point. Then Paris Childress will keep it. Run nine yards for the score. The two point conversion is good. And the Jays in the comeback trail, 17-14 in lead. Here comes St. Augs running back. Dennis Burke's going to break tackles with a really good 34-yard run for the score. Down the sideline, untouched. PAT good, 21-17 St. Augs. Jays have gone an 81-yard, nine-play drive. Third and six, Childress, who was the man of the hour, to Jacob Rowe for a 22-yard gain to keep the drive alive. 
We're going to see the same drive now. Two plays later, Paris Tudor is going to throw to Guy Bumpus for the score. PAT good, 24-21 Jesuit. Then on third and three, the money man, Todd Golemi, the Jesuit runner, will get the key first down to seal the victory. And the Jays 2-0 against St. Aug, and the big Jesuit crowd is fired up as their team is in the quarters, 24-21 over the Purple Knights. Hanville using the defense to beat Mandeville, 13-3. Hanville came in as heavy favorites tonight. We're going to see Mandeville in the white. The Skippers have a really, really nice early drive here that really kind of kept them in the ball game, kept their hope going on third and three quarterback. Brandon McCollum's going to keep it for the first down of the 19-yard line. We're going to see the same drive, 8-19, the drive lasted. A nice, nice 37-yard field goal. Mandeville's up 3-0 at that point. But the ensuing kickoff after the Scott Markey field goal, Dominic Brown will take it. The hole is huge, and he goes 80 yards. That Hondrill special teams is something special, and a 7-3 Tiger lead. Special teams always kill you. Give up an easy touchdown. Here we're going to see Hanville turn up the defense. McCullum's thrown for a loss by 6-7 Derek Paul. No back to fake to it. And you use the kicking game, the defense, and this guy, Kendall Joseph. A great move, then another 37-yard touchdown. 13-3 Hanville at that point, and that's how it ended. So Hanville was in there. Now could Shaw get there to set up the Shaw-Hanville rubber match? Brother Martin had other ideas tonight. Now let's set the stage. 7-3 Brother Martin, under two minutes to go in the game. Shaw's got a fourth down, deep, deep in their territory. Oh, okay, here's what happened. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Coach. What we're going to do is, obviously, we've had a little bit of a technical difficulty, a turnover here. What mm -hmm. we're going to do is we're going to re-rack that tape. We're going to go all the way back to the head. And when we get there, the folks in the studio are going to let us know. And they're there. So they recover quickly. Now, 7-3, Brother Martin, two minutes to go. Here's what happened. Fourth down, deep in their territory. Elwell's going to roll to his own end zone and get sacked for, by Brother Martin. Kenny Bordery for the safety. 9-3, Brother Martin, at that point. Shaw on the onside kick would scramble, and they would get a Troy Cox recovered, and the Eagles down six still alive. Uh, it, and fighting. Two plays later, Elmo's going to throw a slant to D'Artagnan Miller, but we're going to see Miller fumble the ball. Nick Detero recovers it. The ref called Miller down. Then he gets overruled. Brother Martin gets the ball back, and Coach Tierney is irate. And I tell you, looking at it, I think it was a fumble. And Shaw won it. Uh, Shaw won the first one, 35-21, but Martin won the rematch. I think we're a better football team now. We made some changes. We did a lot of things different. They're a better football team now, too, but I think we got a little more speed on the field. And uh, we played our two quarterbacks, Ricky Corrales and Blair Barbier, both ways to try and compensate for their speed, and I think they had a lot to do with the ball game. And Bobby Conlon, a happy man, his brother Martin. Moves to the quarters. They beat Shaw 9-3, to three, so it'll be Martin and Hanville next week. Now let's move to 4A. Salmon lurking at the top of the 4A bracket, but they had to get past the Carver Rams tonight. And I tell you, Salmon's defense is really playing well. Carver quarterback Delvin Haynes is going to get sacked by Wayne Walters for an 8-yard loss. The Carver punter Alvin George will fumble the snap.